Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Through the Bible with Joe McGee. We're going from Genesis to Revelation in chronological order. And it's really fascinating what we're learning. Some fascinating thoughts. We're picking up Leviticus uh, chapter 21. I'm going to back up chapter 20 and pick up some things, but we're talking about instructions for the priest. You know, the ones that are supposed to lead the, the worship and the sacrifice in God's great detail. Right before we get to that, though, we're talking about punishments for disobedience. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 20, the Lord said to Moses, give the people of Israel these instructions, which apply to both native Israelites and the foreigners living in Israel. If any of them offer their children a sacrifice to Molech, they must be put to death. They had child sacrifice back then. Nothing really changed. I mean, it's still this crazy world. The people of the community must stone them to death. I myself will turn against them and cut them off from the community because they have defiled my sanctuary and brought shame on my holy name by offering children of Molech. And if the people of the community ignore those who offer their children to Molech, refuse to execute them, I myself will turn. I will turn against them and their families, and I will cut them off from the community. This will happen to all who commit spiritual prostitution by worshiping Molech. It was a false god, but it was real big. He says, I will turn against those who commit spiritual prostitution by putting their trust in mediums of those who consult the spirits of the dead. I will cut them off from the community. So set yourselves apart as holy, for I am the Lord God. Keep all my decrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord God who makes you holy. Anyone who dishonors father and mother must be put to death. Such a person is guilty of a capital offense. A capital offense. Oh, that's deep. If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the man and the woman who have committed adultery must be put to death. Do what? Yeah, they must be put to death. This is a very serious sin in God's eyes. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man is with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They both, must both be put to death for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries a woman and her mother, he has committed a wicked act. The man and woman must both be burned to death to wipe out such wickedness among you. You can't marry a, the wife and her mother. You, you're having sex with your wife and your wife's mother. I mean, it's just it's just insane. If a woman presents herself as a male, uh, presents herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it, she and the animal must both be put to death. He must kill both, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a shameful disgrace must be publicly cut off from the community. Since the man has violated his sister, he must be punished for his sin. If a man has sexual relations with a woman during menstrual cycle, he must then be cut off from the community for they have exposed the source of their blood flow. Do not have sexual relations with your aunt or with your mother's sister or your father's sister. For this would dishonor a close relative. Both parties are guilty and will be punished for their sin. If a man has sex with his uncle's wife, he has violated his uncle. Both the man and the woman will be punished for their sin, and they will die. They will both die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has violated his brother. The guilty couple will remain childless. You must keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. Otherwise, the land which I'm bringing you to for your new home will vomit you out. Do not live according to the customs of the people I'm driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. But I have promised you, you will possess the land because I will give you, give it to you as your possession, a land flowing with milk and honey, because I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from other people. You must therefore make a distinction between ceremonial clean and unclean animals, between clean and unclean birds. You must not defy yourselves by any any unclean animal or bird or creature that scurries along the ground, for I have identified them as unclean for you. You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from other people to be my very own. Men and women living among you who act as mediums and consult spirits of the dead 
must be put to death by stoning. They are guilty of a capital offense. Well, is that plain enough? God's not into mediums and psychics. It's not good. I know you see them on the, every, every city you go to, there's a building or a bit office place or a house where they say, well, come in, we'll read, we'll read your palm. We'll read your stuff. No, don't do that. That's not good. Don't do it. Only person you need is God. You don't need some medium. All you need is God. Oh, that was good. So here's instructions for the priest. Here's what the Lord said to Moses. Give the following instructions to the priest, the descendants of Aaron. A priest may not make himself ceremonially unclean by touching the dead body of a relative. The only exceptions are his closest relatives, his mother, his father, son, his daughter, his brother, or his virgin sister who depends on him because she has no husband. But a priest must not defile himself and make himself unclean for someone who is related to him only by marriage. God's getting very detailed again. The priest must not shave their heads or trim their beards or cut their bodies. They must be set apart as holy to God. They must never bring shame on the name of God. They must be holy for they're the ones who present special gifts to the Lord, the gifts of food for their God. Priests may not marry a woman defiled by prostitution. They must not marry a woman who is divorced from her husband. For the priest is set apart as holy to God. You must treat them as holy because they offer up food for your God. You must consider them holy because I am the Lord God and I make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she also defiles her father's holiness. She must be burned to death. Now, I'm reading this rather quick, but the reason I'm doing this so you can just read, because nobody ever reads the law. God takes sin very seriously because it's got death attached to it. It'll spread. It spreads like wildfire. He won't tolerate it. He's trying to preserve a people, bless a people, love a people. You're going to live in houses you didn't build, even you didn't build. He's trying to find something to bless so the world will look at the, what made you so lucky? There's no such thing as luck. I'm a child of God, and God's blessed me. The high priest may marry only a virgin. He may not marry a widow or a woman who is divorced or a woman who is to file herself a prostitution. She must be a virgin from his own clan so that he will not dishonor the descendants among the clan. For I am the Lord who makes him holy. Verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to Aaron. In all future generations, none of your descendants who has any effect will qualify uh, to offer food to his God. No one has a defect, qualifies, whether she's blind, lame, disfigured, disformed, uh, or has a broken foot or arm, or a hunchback, or dwarf, or a defective eye, eye, skin, scabs, damage, testicles. No descendant of Aaron who has a defect may approach the altar to present special gifts to the Lord. Since he has a defect, he may not approach the altar to offer food to his God. However, he may eat the food. He may eat the food offered to God, including holy sacrifices. And the most holy offerings. Yet because of his defect, he may not enter the room behind the inner curtain or approach the altar. Listen to find my holy place. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So God, he gave Moses these instructions to Aaron and all the Israelites. Now, I had a special ed class uh, when I was a school administrator years ago. And uh, kids had been born uh, blind, lame. One kid was missing legs and arms. People said, well, <clears throat> did God not know? God is a compassionate, loving, forgiving, healing God. But this was the priesthood. And so it was all visual. And that's why they had to wear certain clothes, do it a certain way, couldn't cut their hair. It was a visual thing about the holiness of God. Had nothing to do with God not liking defects. God loves everybody, wants to heal everybody, wants to bless everybody. So during those years I was a school administrator, we had a special ed class. Uh, kids that had uh, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, uh, for whatever reason, something that happened in childbirth. We had classes for them. We had people assigned to them to pray for them. Uh, we had intercessors assigned to every kid in that class, every Sunday, every Wednesday. So we got somebody that's uh, a personal uh, steward for you that'll take you to class, help you do what you need to do. We have a special intercessor assigned just to you and for you to pray for you and pray for a long life uh, and divine help that God would heal. So we never ran from anything. And uh, it was just odd how some people would would question us about some of that. So what do you do? God loves everybody. God wants to heal everybody. God wants to bless everybody. 
Some people started off behind the sort of behind the eight balls, they used to say. But God wants to redeem from the curse of the law, which is poverty, sickness, and death. So we loved it, being able to minister to people who other people would shun away from, walking outside the hall, don't want to look at them, don't want to touch them. No, we, we'd hug them and embrace them and love them and, uh, and, and took them to regular Sunday school class, had games with them, let them participate. We believe in God. We believe in the goodness of God. We believe in the healing power of God. So let's start acting like it. <laughs> so it was an incredible time. So that's a lot of great instruction of how God viewed the different things. So what you learn is that God is a loving, forgiving, healing God, but there's certain things you had to do to approach God. Now, this is old covenant. When the new covenant came, everything changed. The old covenant wasn't bad. God had to start with the old covenant. People needed to know what did God like, not like, all this do for me and not do against me. So we need to know what God said. So we're going to pick up somewhere next week with uh, the festivals. It's going to be very fascinating. So you tune in. So thanks for listening today. God bless you guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. And we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.